the trick with this is never to look it straight in the eye. Just, ha! Hi. Hi. David Zeritsky for the Bond Experience. Welcome back. I think many of you have been potentially waiting for this for some time. I'm standing in front of my Skyfall display. I'm clearly wearing what we now affectionately call the Enjoying Death outfit. Oh, so relaxed. What do I have? I have the Levi's Menlo. I have the Topman. I have the right Chukka boots. I've got everything all connected. And I've got the Enjoying Death shirt. Yes, we even call the shirt itself Enjoying Death. So one thing I'm going to do before I really get into this is take off this jacket because it is real feel of 105 out. And I don't think I need a leather jacket. That's just me. All right. We're here to actually talk about a frugal bond moment. What, David? Jaw dropping? You talking? I thought you left frugal bond back in the, back in the 2013s, 2014s at best. It's, it's 2020. Yes, I'm not talking about a particular brand because I feel very comfortable talking about this shirt today because there is no brand that owns the IP, the intellectual property of this shirt anymore. It used to be, as we know, it was made from a Zara shirt and a Zara youth shirt, no less. So the one that Craig uh, wore had to be an extra large, maybe an extra, extra large because it wore, obviously was youth, very small. There was a short run done many years ago, uh, and I mean a short run, but now we have an opportunity for those of you that love this outfit, love this look, to really connect on. And it is a frugal bond moment because, first of all, to find those Zara shirts, it, it's extremely rare if you can find one. But the second thing is they're expensive. If you look on eBay or the secondhand market, they are expensive. So Daniel Love, that's his real name. It's also his porn name, but it's his real name too. Comes to the rescue with Royal Filmware's edition of the Enjoying Death shirt. And today we are going to pick this thing apart. We're going to talk about the details, the feel, the function, the look, the sizing. Did he get it right? All these questions are going to be answered. Buckle up for this one. I think you're going to enjoy it. Okay. First of all, I was sent by Daniel two sizes, a small and a large. So the first thing we need to talk about is when you get these in, they come in this pretty nondescript uh, plastic and then you just take them out and fair balance. I want to tell you about something. I wound up washing this shirt and giving it just a little bit of a steam. So it is not as wrinkly and puckered as you would get taking it straight out of the package. I also wanted to see if I could soften it up a little bit. All right, I'm going to start with probably my only constructive criticism of this shirt. And then the rest of it's just going to be gushing in a positive way. Not in a wound sort of way. I should really stipulate that. When I first got this, um, I have an original Zara and I also have that second run. And the original Zara was a pretty lightweight shirt. This is more of a medium weight or middle weight. It is a pinpoint. So you think about Twill, Oxford, pinpoint. It's a pinpoint shirt. Let's get up close. So you can see this is not a scratchy, stiff shirt by any stretch of the imagination. You can see the way it moves and you can hear it against the mic. It's not rustling. This was not a scratchy shirt coming out of it. It wasn't thick like a thick Oxford or a Twill shirt. It was more kind of like a dress shirt, but the original one was just a teeny bit lighter in weight which makes sense, hot weather, the way it flows, and it puckers. If you see shots of Craig in the shirt, um, it, it puckers. It, it kind of almost, it's not seersucker, but it's got this type of cotton weight that's very thin. It's not slub, and it's not seersucker. It's somewhere in there. Where's Matt Spazer when you need him? Okay, so like I said, this is pinpoint, but it's important to know that. Now, after my first washing, it did get softer. And that makes sense. When you have a new shirt, there's something called sizing in there. It can stiffen it up a little bit. You get that little clothing smell. It's gone. I gave it a light steam, and now here we have the shirt. Now, I'm wearing the correct Topman 
chinos so you could see it with the outfit. Now let's talk about the way it fits. I'm wearing a small and you can see it from the side. I don't do that hunch anymore. Good on you, David. And you can see it on the back. I'll pull my arms out. You can see movement. Now the small, admittedly, as I come in closer, is fitting me. Uh, you can see my pecs and I'm saying that not as in any ego. It's important to talk about the fit here and you can see the way it fits my torso here. Important to go over the stats as usual. Um, I am a 40 inch chest. I'm a 31 inch waist. That's probably all we have to go. But I'm also about 5'9", so I'm not statuesque. I'm not incredibly short, but I'm not statuesque. But one of the things I wanted to bring up is the tail of this. Now, in the original movie, the tail comes down just to about the crotch level. I thought when I got this that this was going to be much longer, watch this, than was necessary, meaning I was going to have to go to my good friend, my good friend Steve the Taylor, who grows tomatoes. He has given me a tomato, David, Italian gentleman. But if you take a look at this with the jacket, it's actually pretty right. Like, I don't think I would get it tailored. For my height, and he wanted to keep this a little bit on the longer side because people that are six feet and above, they complained a little bit about the Madagascar shirt, said it's a little bit of a crop top. Can you make it a little bit longer? I beg of ye, I beg of ye. But this shirt fits, I think, right. It should be a little bit lower than the jacket. Let's hearken back to the scene, not the scene where he's drinking, but the scene with the jacket, especially when he's like in M's apartment. You do see the way this fits. It's very relaxed, it's very comfortable, but it does peek out of the jacket. So to have Steve Taylor take it up a quarter of an inch, is it worth it? I don't think so. And it should peek out out of the back of the jacket. And by the way, some of you have this Levi's jacket, some of you have lookalikes. It's a pretty, pretty weathered standard looking jacket, but this right here, wait for it, is the drinking scene outfit, which is kind of what we know because it's, it's kind of a happy hour look. You've got Bond playing the game. And we've got to talk about the fit with this because right now the small's kind of representing the fit he had in the movie. What do I mean by that? Well, the arm holes you can see are nice and high. It's not a slouchy arm. In fact, I will tell you, there was a little bit of room in the forearm, but as I rolled it, I was happy about that because with the Zara one, there's, so, there's such a lack of fabric in the forearm, it's hard to roll the Zara one. It actually gets like really, really tight. But this one, you have no problem. And look at that. Look at the way the arm fits. It's a really good and appropriate screen accurate silhouette. So for the drinking game thing, it does the trick. I believe he keeps two buttons unbuttoned. It would look a little bit more open, but I've got my lovely little mic here. And in the torso for the small right now, I'll take it. I'll definitely take it. But one of the things we've got to talk about, and there's a reason why I'm approaching you, and I'm getting way close. If you're watching this on a TV, turn down the resolution because it's going to get ugly, is the pattern. So he nailed the pattern. And I was, I was like, if he gets the pattern wrong, all bets are off. They're just off. But they're not. The pattern is great. Uh, the way it flows, the way it trickles down. You've got this kind of like strange little panini. Panini? David, that's a sandwich. Peonies? Pekinese? That's a dog. Yeah, it's some sort of flower. It's a blue flower. That's all you need to know. It's great. Now, the original shirt, the original Zara shirt, is a slightly, and I mean slightly, infinitesimal, say that 20 times, uh, blue. It's like a, a slightly deeper blue, but I mean, unless you actually had a Zara and held it up to it, there would be no difference. With the Madagascar shirt that he did, I kind of dinged him a little bit on. It was too light, if you remember. It wasn't yellow enough and people were tea staining. With this shirt, you will have no staining to do. It is blue, it is clearly blue, it's that light blue, and it shows. These pockets, these working pockets, look bang on. They've got the right width and size, according to the Zara. Uh, and um, quite frankly, it is uh, usable. I don't and never will use front pockets like this, but if you do, they will billow out and be utilized. So it's really good on that. I have to show you something, because I would imagine that some of you hopefully all of you, are not cosplaying as Bond 
to buy this, but to get that look and have kind of a secret moment, wear this out. So you may want to wear this with the sleeves down. It's got two buttons. Let me show you on that. And if I button this, button, button, who's got the button? Love going back to Skyfall. So take a look at the arm length. Perfect. All right, not too short. Here's what it looks like coming down. If you would imagine walking, why do I, why do I do that? But the arm length is perfect for my sleeve length, which is about a 32, 33 sleeve length. I'm sorry, rest of the world, I'm using US terms as far as measurement is concerned. But this is what I mean by slightly extra fabric, not a ton extra, but enough that watch how easy it is to roll. And by the way, nine times out of 10, 10 times out of 10, when I wear this out, and I will, I'm gonna roll that puppy. Heck yeah, because that's the look. Right above the elbows, not below the elbows. That's a politician look when you roll up to here. I'm a working man, vote for me. No, just right, ab <laughs> right above the elbow, silly. So one thing I do wanna talk about with this is the sizing again. So you at home should be doing something. Not just talking about the screen accuracy, the color, the pattern, and things like that, but we should be talking about the fit. This may not be the fit that everybody likes. The small for me, you know, I'm not being able to pull it out, but for me, I kind of do like it like this because I like things to have that fitted look. But let's take a look at what a medium looks like. Okay, so now we have the medium. This is the medium, all right? So again, more room. It's certainly not fitting me as tight in the chest, not as fitted. Now I left just so you could see what this looks like with the sleeves down. Hey, it's a nice shirt in and of itself. Um, I am gonna roll it though, because we're, we're getting that look. So immediately when I try on the medium, I am noticing a little bit more length. So you can see right now, now if I was to keep the medium for myself, I would probably do something with the length. The length is just a wee bit long as far as I'm concerned in what I would want in this shirt. And again, this shirt has been washed and it's been lightly steamed. So let's take a look at the medium fit. It's not bad at all. I mean, medium's good, I think. You know, it gives me that kind of slouchy look. Um, if anything, now that I'm like, kind of see the monitor and everything like that, it kind of has a little bit more of that screen accurate, relaxed look than the small does. It really, I mean, his doesn't, is not showing off his pecs or anything like that. He's, if, you know, he's got that good movement, but if I'm looking at myself right here, medium might be more screen accurate. So maybe I would get Steve, Steve the tailor, I gotta stop that, uh, to take it in just a wee bit, you know, maybe like that length just so it's a little bit more comfortable. All right, let's take a look at that. I, I'm doing alterations right in front of you people. Come on, it's good value for its money. This is free, this video. All right, here's the back, here's the medium. I've got good airflow. What am I doing? I don't, I don't even think this is a, that was, I don't dance. I think I just proved that. Uh, so medium, what do you think? I mean, I'd love to hear your comments. I'll tell you what. Here's what I'm gonna do. I, I never crowdsource these type of things. I like to make my own opinions, but I have a feeling the medium is it, but I'd love to hear in your comments, which fit did you like better, the small or the medium? The small might've been too small. And now that I'm thinking like if I'm out and about, maybe the medium would be better. See, but this is what goes through our head. You're like, David, are you the most indecisive individual? You know you do this too. But knowing my size, this is going to help you make a judgment call on what size for you to get, and that's incredibly important. One aspect that we should bring up is we're calling this frugal bond. For many of you, um, I understand this is still an investment, even though it's a replica. Uh, it is a very short run replica. Daniel doesn't make a lot of these. He makes a few in each size. The sizes sell out very quickly, especially after these types of discussions. So this is $89, all right? So as far as, you know, do you save up your pennies for it? Do you invest in it? That's one of the things that you have to answer because there are other frugal things. If you go into iconic alternatives, they have frugal opportunities. What Daniel tries to do is to try to make it screen accurate. So there's frugal bonds that are less expensive, of course, that look really close. They, they, they give you the essence and those are great. I'm here to support all of those, 
But what Daniel loves to do is he, first of all, makes these for himself. You have to know that. He's a fan. He wears these things everywhere. Like, if you ever meet the guy, which I never have yet, weep one day. Uh, he makes this for himself, and then it's great that everybody else kind of likes it. But you've got to really ask your question is, $89, is it that shirt that I've always wanted? And if I'm going to get it hemmed, maybe it's another $10. Now I'm not the $99. Is it worth it $100 to have the perfect enjoying death shirt? Again, it's one of these questions that only you, you can answer. Okay, I'm back to my small. Did a quick change, but first of all, a couple things. You'll find a link below on how to get one of these shirts yourself from Royal Filmwear. Did a great job replicating it. And again, for an item that you cannot get from the brand itself anymore, even when it was out, no bueno. This is a perfect opportunity. And you, yourself, can run out and enjoy death. Eh, kind of a win-win for everybody. Anyway, this has been David Zaritsky for The Bond Experience. We'll see you all really soon. Take care. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from The Bond Experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.